for some children, and most adolescents, the smartphone is the center of the universe. I knew this in an abstract way, but I don't think I really appreciated how far it went until I read this article, appearing in JAMA Pediatrics. The article is talking about the impact of bedtime use of smartphones and tablets on sleep, and we'll get into that, but first, some shocking background information. Do I sound old when I say I'm shocked by this? You tell me. Shocking statistic number one. A recent survey found that around two-thirds of high schoolers sleep next to a phone or tablet, with nearly 43% of them waking at least once per night to respond to messages or texts. I mean, when I was in high school, you couldn't wake me for a date with Gates McFadden, but these kids are actively checking their phones at night. Shocking statistic number two. 72% of children and 89% of adolescents have a phone or tablet in their bedroom somewhere. Now, we can postulate a lot of bad effects of so much phone exposure. I worry a lot about the social networking dynamic these kids are exposed to, but it's easier to quantify sleep, so we're starting there today. The JAMA Pediatric Study out of King's College London was a meta-analysis of published and unpublished studies evaluating the effect of bedtime smartphone and tablet use on sleep. The researchers combed through more than 450 individual studies, eventually settling on 17 that were of sound enough methodologic quality for inclusion. And the results were fairly consistent. Across multiple sleep domains, use of phones and tablets at night are a significant problem. Studies suggested that about 40% of children will have poor sleep quantity and quality if they use a phone before bed. Compare that to 30% of kids who report poor sleep quality if they don't use a phone. They also found that 13% of kids who use a phone before bed report excessive daytime sleepiness compared to just 5% who, you know, just go to sleep. Caveats abound, though. None of these studies were randomized trials. It's possible that kids who use phones at night have other things going on in their lives that contribute to poor sleep quality. Additionally, similar effects were seen among kids who had access to phones at night, even if they didn't use them. This calls into question the infamous blue light theory, that the blue light emitted by phone screens lowers endogenous melatonin secretion. Rather, perhaps we're simply looking at the effects of increased arousal that a stimulating conversation with a friend or a spirited game of Hearthstone can engender. But the bottom line is that phones are ubiquitous. What's worse, the social stigma of not having access to a phone is a major concern of teenagers as well. So we should all figure out ways to keep phones out of our kids' bedrooms. Or at least we should sleep on it. For MedPage Today, I'm Perry Wilson.